It's a goat. <laughs> Welcome everybody. The second meeting of the month, Board of Trustees. Um, presently, we have two trustees, uh, fiscal officer, um, a road administrator. You're on the wrong front. No. <laughs> he doesn't we, recognize you. We, we changed the We changed the last. Yeah, you're now road administrator. Oh, you're going to get a bat. All right. No, 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 no increase. Yeah, same pay. Same increase. <laughs> bigger list to go with it. Yeah, I have a bigger list. And zoning inspector who apparently got his calendar wrong. <laughs> no, I, I was, there was a conflict the first of the month, so I'm here at the third of the month. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, third week. thank you for making an appearance. Um, guests from the floor, I know Laura. Um, are, are we here for the same thing or? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm David Diamond. I'm with Community Solutions, and we're, we're both here about the agrarian trail. Okay. Unless can you have something else. Too. Can you give us about two minutes to, to just run through a couple of things, and then it'll be all yours? Beautiful. Okay. Thank you, David. Um, okay. We have uh, three sets of minutes to approve this evening. Uh, one for okay. November 5th. Is there a motion for that approval? I would make that motion. That was our normal meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess I'll second it. For the discussion regarding those minutes, hearing none, may we vote, please? Uh, Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. And then we have a special, two special, two special meeting minutes to approve. One on the fourteenth. Is there a motion to approve that set? I'll make that motion. Mr. Crockett moves. I'll second it. Any further discussion regarding the adoption of that uh, set of minutes? Hearing none, may we vote, please? That. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. And finally, we have a set of special minutes for the special meeting on November 16th. That was the uh, firehouse discussion last Friday. Um, is there a motion to approve those? Yes. Mr. Crockett moves. I'll second and put a discussion here in those minutes. Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. And I entertain a motion to approve payment of accounts of twenty-six thousand four hundred forty-seven dollars and seventy-two cents, broken down general fund six twenty-nine fifteen, fire fund fifteen six twenty-one on one, cemetery one eighty-five oh six, EMS building fifty-three thirty-four eighteen, road bridge thirty-one twenty-nine twenty-six, and capital project one thousand five hundred forty-nine dollars and oh six cents. I just had to change that one. Uh, is there a motion to approve? I would make that motion. Mr. Crockett moves. I'll second any further discussion regarding payment of these accounts. No. None may vote, please. Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Mr. Crockett. Yes. Uh, in remembrance of uh, Lamar Spreckel, I'm going to uh, dispense with going through the correspondence, uh, <laughs> tighten up these meetings, for this evening, <laughs> and uh, move right into uh, discussion from the floor. Okay. That would be you. That would be David and Lamar. All right. <laughs> Let <laughs> me <laughs> get my little map here. Might help to clear some things up. Um, yeah, I'm going to let you figure out how you're going to show the, the uh, viewing your audience. Your back is, your camera, <laughs> yeah, you might want to. At the same time. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that is pretty tricky. <laughs> I really don't know. Maybe we'll turn it around after we finish yeah, talking okay. about it for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, so what we have here uh, is a map of the proposed area trail, uh, which we're hoping to get a, a resolution of support from the board of trustees. Um, uh, and even, oh wow! <laughs> Hold the one. Uh, so wait, we're well, applying for hold it still. A okay, go ahead. From yeah, okay. Ohio wait, wait, fund. let's see. For this trail, um, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, oh well, you want to call it like that? Yellow Springs, mm -hmm. and particularly the high school and middle school, mm -hmm. but also the village at That's large, um, with uh, with Agraria, the multi-use trail. Agraria is our uh, center for regenerative um, agriculture and regenerative practice in general. That's been established for about. Uh, coming up on a year now and uh, we've had a really good partnership with the Yellow Springs School so far um, 
we've had a number of school groups come out, we've had a number of community events, and um, all of it would be vastly improved if we could have people bike and walk out instead of always having to drive. Mm -hmm. um, but biking and walking on Dayton Yellow Springs Road is not um, advisable, mm -hmm. ever. So uh, that's the purpose of this, uh, this application. And, um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, we, we're wanting to, uh, to present it to the uh, various governing bodies and take any questions. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we'd love to have the support of, of Miami Township. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Laura, anything to add just before? Yeah, I don't know. Have you ever uh, been um, asked to do one of those resolutions of support for Clean Ohio Project? Uh, sure. Lots, yeah. lots of times, at least for the, the Council of Land Trust. Yes. Um, I'm mm -hmm. not sure there's any young ones right off hand for Clean Ohio, but you know for the Council of Land Trust. Yeah, it's yeah, so great. And I, I'm an attorney, and I do some legal work for Agraria, but I'm here on my own dime, really, tonight to su support it. I've done a lot of trail projects, so this would be the Clean Ohio Trail Fund would be the grant source they'd go after and the landowners are putting up a uh, match in terms of land value um, that are, is being donated through some of the parcels that are going to be um, part of this corridor. The um, corridor is also going to be outside of the easement area so that it doesn't, the construction won't affect the um, ag easement that's mm -hmm. going on the property. Um, sometimes, as you know, it makes sense to for local governments to think about, and everybody knows budgets are stretched and so forth, but if there may be some ways local government can assist with issues with trails as they do with the big trail out here. Um, I don't know if the budget's been put together yet, but the timeline of these grants is, has been the same for a while, and it's... February 1st is the grant deadline. Mm -hmm. So at your next meeting, I think David probably wants to be on the agenda to present a written resolution mm -hmm. asking for your support for the grant. Mm -hmm. Now some look, I don't believe that any match is required at this moment because of the land value that's mm -hmm. being donated. Um, some local governments help provide some match or support in terms of in-kind activities um, so I don't know if that will be an ask or not mm -hmm. from you or the village or the park that you met with the park district right yeah they yeah were, we did meet me with uh, Green County Parks and Trails and um, they were very encouraging and, and definitely offered support and they actually offered uh, some matching money towards the grant. Mm -hmm. will they mean will they be maintaining it well that's uh, that's something that no, no, they, they will not be. Um, we, that's one thing that, that has to be figured out. Um, we obviously are going to, at Community Solutions, we're going to assume at least part of the burden and try to, um, you know, be responsible for it. But we're trying to, you know, we're, we're figuring out exactly how to uh, put a plan together to, uh, to make sure that the maintenance is taken care of. Because uh -huh. uh, it's going to be part paved and part crushed limestone, it's going to definitely want to require some Has the application been uh, uh, put together yet? Um, it's in in process. I mean, it's due February 1st, mm -hmm. so um, it's a lot of it, it has been, um, we, we did apply last year, um, so, and we learned a lot through that process, and a lot of it will be um, you know, updated versions of those materials. Mm -hmm. Would you expect the application to be mostly complete before our next meeting, if you're coming back to our next meeting for that resolution? Um, I mean, so we could review sure. it? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Uh -huh. I, we'll, we'd be happy to let you see, um, a, you know, a nearly complete application for sure. A a including the, the draft that you're, the draft resolution? That yes. You're, Yes, I was going to see if I could even email that to you uh, ahead of time. Sure, yeah, that's what I'd like to see. Yeah. And uh, you would, would you like to see whatever grant materials we have through mm -hmm. the email as well? Mm -hmm. Please. Okay, we'll certainly do that. Yeah, the more we can understand it, certainly the better. Okay. 
sure you can grasp it. Mark, Don, any questions, response? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, sounds like a good project to me. <laughs> the, school, the schools are enthusiastic, right? Because some of their yeah. students will be coming out to Ricker area. Yeah, we you have you have uh, one private owner between us and the schools, and then you cross a right of way. Well, we figured out that we are actually going to need uh, two landowners um, because. It's got to, as it goes across that right of way, um, it's got to go, uh, the best way to do it would be to go across Mr. Shorter's property. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, he's somebody who I understand had been enthusiastic before. And we're, we're getting ready to present, present to him, um, you know, what his part would be and, and work out whether that would be a, a small purchase or an easement that he would grant us or, or what. But that is just going to be the very corner of this property, with barely any of it at all. And the most substantial landowner is the one that you already mentioned, or the one that you were talking about. Yep. <clears throat> is, is the drawing conceptual? It looks like it runs through the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. Now that we are, that's we're, it's, a, it's a, that's an active project that we're trying to figure out, because the location of that cemetery is only really becoming clear right now. And whether it's actually, whether, it, whether there is anyone there is definitely, um, uh, it's being studied right now by a graduate student from Wright State. Uh, but I mean, the only two um, sets of remains that were there originally have been transported to uh, a different cemetery, Woodlawn. And um, we're, so there's a, um, a graduate student at Wright State who's digging into whether there's any other people that uh, that we might um, digging in. Well, <laughs> we're, we're not doing that. <laughs> so it, it, we're, we're trying to figure out whether it's going to be necessary for us to go around the cemetery or whether we could just go through it and put some signage about its previous um, about its previous uh, use. Did we ever find it? Well, we know where it is, but. Well, we know. It was Basically, surveyed in. It was surveyed in, yeah. But, but there, is is there an ownership yet? Because there wasn't an owner. That's something that this prior. graduate student is, is. That's his first item on his agenda to look into. Uh -huh. Is what is the ownership of it? Because it's it's very unclear. Yeah. Is it a private cemetery on private land? Probably, yeah. As you know, a few, a few owners years. back. So it's only Just a public. A few. It's only a public cemetery if non-family members ended up being buried there. You know, and that flips it into the question of whether the township has any responsibility if it's a public cemetery. But if it was a private it's cemetery, cemetery, private that, cemetery. That the ownership is still unclear. Because it was never transferred. What do you mean? It was, it's just part of that farm or something. That, is it part of a bigger property? Has, has your researcher talked no, to the surveyor who surveyed it off? He uh, did that based on the deed, probably. In 2017? Yeah. Yeah, no, he's, he, yeah, he, I'm sure he's going uh, to, to check that. I mean, if, if he's I'm not, I'll tell him to do that. that. <laughs> survey. I don't know. See, he does have a copy of the survey. identify an ownership after the survey? I haven't looked at it prior to the survey being done, or after the survey being done. Prior to it, there was there's no name on it. You can't. You right. can't click on it and, and have it be a parcel. It's not existing. Yeah, it's just no, it part was of the that is on the county GIS. But the point I'm making is that the surveyor, when he did his research of the deeds, the deeds established that there was a cemetery there. Yeah, he so would that he already has the information that you're telling your graduate student to find, okay. probably. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, he does. Uh, we did give him a copy of that survey. And so, um, you know, if he if he's not talking to that surveyor, then we'll certainly okay. put him down that path. The, the other one that I looked at isn't there a drainage swale along that side of the high school? Uh, yes. And it looks like the path is running <laughs> down the swale. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Uh, uh, it's down or the next, next to the swale, right? I don't know. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's just the inside the swale. Yes. Okay. So this is the cemetery bike path. 
<laughs> I don't know if we'll name it that, uh, but you know, we'll we'll see what the we'll we'll try to figure out what that what would be best how would be best to deal with that question right now. Maybe you know, the family name that's on the cemetery. Yeah, no, we're definitely gonna at least put some some signage there to give people a sense of what they're what what's you know what they're riding through or what they're riding around. Um, it's just a question of. Well, I'm very interested in the project. Yeah. And you have, there are two, we have two meetings before the February 2nd deadline. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we're going to try to get our uh, materials. Yeah. Well, we have a lot more than that. Before. Yeah, December and January. Oh, excuse me, two oh. months before. Yeah, two months, yeah. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. I mean, if we only want to do two meetings, <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I really think that we will have, uh, you know, we'll have a close to complete application for you to look at. Um, whether we'll be completely finished up with all the landowners at that point, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's, that's all part of the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm certainly interested in seeing what the, the whole package looks like, so... So, the, one, sorry, the, one, the one thing that is tricky about doing these projects for public access, transportation, recreation, as you know, is that governments have a higher level of immunities, especially with uh, uh, recreational activities. And they also are, have better access to insurance. Um, so one of the pro just a practical problem with these trails is if a pro if a nonprofit builds the trail, the nonprofit, even though it, it's public access, ends up insuring it on their general commercial liability policy, mm -hmm. which is, you know, I think it's kind of a fairness issue. Is you know if the public supports the project. Why should necessarily a nonprofit have to put it on their general commercial liability, and they don't get recreational immunity like governments do, you know? And so that's like a practical problem. And I've solved that problem with a government lease of pro like the entity might own it, or the underlying landowners may give a lease, but the government like leases it for purposes of public access. And then they just put it on their insurance um, in case anybody gets hurt, and um, and then for recreational immunity purposes and government immunity purposes. Mm -hmm. So it's a cheaper way to insure what goes on on that right of way. The right Glen way. has recreational immunity. Um, you have access to their property. I don't for think free. they have it for. I don't think they have it at the same level governments do. My, my understanding is my that because you don't pay opinion. to use the Glen, if you don't pay to use the Glen, you have no liability, no uh, recourse for suing. Yeah, but you still have to um, any known dangers. You're supposed to. Um, yeah. You know, what, take what care you're, of those. you're getting at is who and then owns government and then government a, a governmental. Unit what I hear you. Moving towards is uh, who really manages this trail? Because see, if you're managing it, and the township says has the liability, that doesn't make sense. Um, no, it could because the township could hire the mowing. I mean, you can hire vendors. You know, like the school could agree to mow their section, and Agrary agrees to mow their section. I mean, governments hire people to do stuff for them all the time. And you just have a formal relationship, say, they're, they're agreeing, you can have an agreement, they're going to agree to know this. Well, that, and then they're acting under the government. So th this gets me back to, why is some of it paved and some of it not? Or, I mean, why some limestone and some asphalt? Right. Uh, one of the landowners is only really willing to donate the land or even sell it if we promise not to pave uh, that section. I'm, I, you know, and um, my hope is that that would be a 50-year promise or something. Because <laughs> eventually, you know, 
Eventually, but, the fact of the matter is, for ADA purposes, you really ultimately want to pay it, I think. Well, that's but just, that's just me. I'm just mm -hmm. saying. It's just interesting to me when I look at, at public bicycle paths, or more public than this one might be, you know, all the things that are going on, the, the, the barrier fences, you know, to keep people from wandering off onto private property, and, and, the, and the constant, you know, relatively constant maintenance, not, not perfect, but, but they're maintained all the time, and realizing that maybe that's part of what has to happen if you're going to assume the liability for it. So the studies are, you can go to AmericanGreenways.org and read every study ever done on the trail. And a lot of, there's a lot of myths about trails, you know, that are debunked by almost any serious study. And one of them, it, just like with your roadways, I mean, how often do people go off the roadway to just be a mere trespasser, you know? Almost never. If they go off the roadway without being invited, they, they may have an intention to do some crime, but none of us can control crime, you know? But people don't just wander off just to be wandering off, generally. And um, that's something that comes up almost every time a trail's built. Well, I'm just responding to yeah, what yeah, I've yeah. seen. Some, and sometimes the trail builder or the jurisdiction, they do put up a, a fence. Uh, what generally happens, because a certain landowner has a, a, a concern. Okay, almost what always happens is they put up the fence and eventually the landowner asks for it to come down. Because <laughs> they don't need it, don't want it, don't want the, it impeding their vision, or they want the access. That's really almost always what happens. And, uh, you know, those, I hear those concerns a lot, and I always find it odd that, that they don't complain about that about the township road in front of their house. <laughs> you should have a fence along. No, I, I, know, I hear what you're you know, saying. Like, and, and there, there's a car that if they really want to do you harm, they can make a fast getaway, load up your stuff, and get away. You know? And I don't know, you just, it's, but it almost always comes up on these trail projects. Um, but uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think any of those concerns are, are raised here. And um, so this is more like a, a small local road, mm -hmm. essentially, is what it is for um, non-motorized traffic. Although any any that you can do agreements, there's oftentimes the agricultural um, neighbors want to cross it or, or run their equipment yeah. on. You can do that. Of course, authorized emergency vehicles. It's built to so be built to an ODOT standard. When you use this Clean Ohio Trail money, it has to be built to ODOT standard, so you can run an ambulance on it and a fire truck. And I mean, hmm. it, even though it's crushed limestone, the base. It'll be base, wide enough. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This particular location, not likely. Oh. <laughs> no, it's not likely, but it occasionally anywhere. happens. It does. I mean, um, so when I was in Wilmington, we had a small trail like this, the um, Luther Warren Peace Path that went from Nelson Avenue to Sugar Tree behind the hospital. And the mayor's receptionist, with whom I worked, went off. She her dog needed to go to the bathroom. Went off trail a little bit. Well, what? She 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 uh, slid on the gravel and kind of she twisted her ankle pretty badly. She thought she broke. She called nine one one. They ran an ambulance down there and got it. But anyway, it does happen occasionally. Yeah. Sure. On the maintenance, we have to pay somebody to maintain our our programs. Is that what you're saying? No, so that part needs to be figured out. So in general, the maintenance, if you have uh, areas to mow, which I don't know if this one will be designed with that or not. Some of them don't have, me, like the Sleuther Warren I was just talking about. No, no berms on that one. Yeah, just it, yeah no, right. It may How do you keep the stuff from encroaching on the river? Yeah. Be oh, kind of well, yeah. it depends on, it. I don't know the topography. Sometimes it's far enough for the ditch or whatever. But um, So that needs to be looked at. Um, you're going to have some probably limb removal and maybe some, perhaps some uh, berm mowing. Once every seven years it should be sealed if it's asphalt. The crushed limestone will need some maintenance. So that needs, the budget needs to be developed. 
Um, Would you Kelly Parks? Well, that's I, I think that this is a certainly something that they should could be asked to do. I know do this, they need to Yeah. Do. So the last trail I helped with was the Clinton County Park District Phase One Clinton Clinton Friendship Trail from Sabina to Bourne Road. That's a four mile section crushed limestone surface. We estimated a twenty year maintenance twenty year budget of thirty thousand dollars to throw off enough income. There was not a lot of mowing on it and some crushed limestone replacement. Um, and so the trails group raised that money and gave it to the park district for the long-term maintenance. The park district was the owner of that project. Um, so there may be, you know, and that may be part of the budget here is what is the long-term maintenance budget. Well, and that, that budget for crushed limestone really varies depending on what the grades are along, along the path. If it has no significance, Area, sloping areas, then it doesn't tend to wash out. But if it does, it's very hard to stop that process. Yeah, I don't know what the topography of this one is. Yeah, I mean, we have we have a topographical map. I don't have that with me this evening, but there are some areas uh, where there's where there's some elevation change for sure. Um, so it's like a lot of little details. Yeah, we 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 may be beyond your discussion. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, this is yeah, my nature. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, well, well, any other questions from the board? Um, or the, I just wanted to know the overall length of the trail. 4,000 feet. Not very long. No. What about the port? That's from Eight east tenths of to a mile, four fifths of a mile. Yeah. Yeah. Four fifths of a mile. So we'll hear from you again. Yes, um, I'll I'll get you materials by email, and then hopefully we'll come back um, and we'll look be on the agenda for the first. And, and when would your hopeful anticipated construction be completed? Um, if you get the grant, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. They will award them in shoot, like fall, yeah, like mm -hmm. yeah, the summer. It probably construction. In the by the end of 2020, I would think you should be able to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not a mile, you know. It's it's not a big long. Yeah. It just depends how much grading and culverts and. Well, there's a couple of water crossings also that yeah. we had to budget for some bridges. So. That's gonna take a little time. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you thank very much you. for coming. Anyways. <laughs> All right. Okay, we'll move on to fire department report. Um, our chief's not here. He did leave a written report and a somewhere a resolution. I've got it right here. Okay. I mean, did you do I just snatched it up. Here you go. I have it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, All right. I have it too. All right, we're good. He writes activities since the last meeting with 21 EMS incidents, nine fire incidents, and two fire safety inspections. Pretty quiet for a period of time, it appears. Uh, we do have uh, an appointment, uh, a resolution for appointment of two board, uh, two board, of two applicants, Kyle Hammond and Ryan Schroeder, both uh, uh, firefighters, and Kyle's EMT um, certification, I guess, is pending. Uh, they're not township residents, but they are both strong candidates. He also writes that, uh, let's not forget that our annual non-denominational non holiday party and award ceremony is Sunday, December 16th at North Park Hotel. Um, he did say that the hotel is very animate, that they have a drop-dead cutoff date for RSVP uh, for, um, for November 30th. So, um, uh, He's <laughs> ever going, and better let Colin know before the 30th, or you're out in the cold. Um, insurance representative from Burnham Flowers, and he's told me about this and really isn't anything to it, uh, contacted them and said that they didn't think our assets were covered well enough and that they're going to uh, propose uh, some, some new insurance 
coverage for us, uh, I assume, before the next time we'll uh, uh, renew, which is first of the year, first of February, I'm not sure when. So um, that's that memo. Let's move to the resolution that came with that. That's 2018-50, appointment of volunteer personnel. Whereas continuing need uh, exists to maintain proper staffing. Tell me about it. Whereas Kyle Hammond and Ryan Schroeder have completed all the necessary application materials, background checks, and interviews to be appointed as volunteers to the Fire and Rescue Department, and whereas Chief Alvin has recommended appointment of these candidates, now therefore it resolved that all the candidates that the above candidates shall be appointed to volunteer positions within the Fire Rescue Department effective November 19, 2018. And so moved. Do we have a motion? I second that. There's a second. Any further discussion regarding resolution 2018-50? The only comment I would make is that I think it was on the front page of the date paper today that some some one of our local jur you know jurisdictions there it was about it was about the lack of uh, availability of part time folks and that full they're having to hire full time and that their expenses are going going way up. So it's not just here. It's well, no, it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. But these are volunteers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so volunteers, yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no further discussion. May we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Okay, welcome. Um, Kyle and Ryan. Any further fire department report or information this evening from anyone? Talked to the chief briefly, and he didn't have anything further than, than that. Uh, those two items, I guess, the Christmas party or non-denominational holiday party, um, RSVPs, and appointments. So we'll go to new firehouse report. Um, I think the one big piece of information there was the meeting that we had on Friday, uh, where we just where we found it necessary to uh, revise the budget for. The, for the base bid amount uh, by about $558,000 from what it, what it was coming in at. And so we made the executive decision to um, change the exterior cladding of the building from the uh, cement board material, the plank cement board material, to a more traditional uh, face brick in, in, in part of it. and. Think I remember the stone. I don't remember to replace the, that bottom part. The name There's a trade name for a certain kind of stone. Yeah. Uh -huh. you know, all I remember is that it was polished. Polished. Mm. So the the look will remain the same, but the material will be different, mm. uh, and it will save us. Uh, in addition to, we're not going to put the light monitors, the one over the apparatus bay and the one over the um, the meeting area. We're not going to include them in the base bid request um, to save approximately $55,000 for that, but they are going to lead to engineering drawings uh, with enough structural uh, specifications that if the bid comes in and it's low enough that we feel comfortable that we could use either money that wasn't necessary for the bid or part of the 5% contingency, the, the $268,000 that we have to go ahead and uh, include the monitors uh, as a change order um, in the project. So that's that's potential. So the combination of that and the exterior cladding uh, worked out to be, I remember, 600 plus, yeah, 600 thousand and, less. 600 and a little bit, $1,000. So. They are open. Yeah. <laughs> so MSA is preparing a new set of drawings, a new set of specifications. Uh, it's probably going to have to go to McQueen County for a for a secondary review because of the exterior change. Um, hopefully that won't delay things too long. In theory, we're hoping that the third bid will be advertised for the first time on January 16th, uh, a Tuesday, and and then. Uh, three times 16, twice after that to make a total of three times, and then we would open those bids um, um, 
first meeting, no, maybe not the first meeting, but the first part of February. And so that's what we're looking forward to. Uh, related to this, mm -hmm. though a, a procedural anomaly, I missed the motion for payment of bills, and I know that the bills included uh, paying a bill from MSA, mm -hmm. and I wasn't, I'd like to be clar uh, clarify, uh, my knowledge to be clarified on what's our ongoing obligation to our architect. Uh, this was $1,500 check. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you made some comment that they're already locked in our basic fee, they've already been paid, right. for, and now it's whole process is dragging out. So what do we still owe them? Uh, or what, what could they still owe, bill us for? What they're billing us for are, in a broad sense, non-intellectual property work. Copies of, new copies of drawings, um, you know, paper back and forth, although I don't think we've seen a whole lot. Although the second, this is, this is, this is money that, that was for the, uh, as, as I recall, for the second bid drawings. So this is, you know, this is what's already been, been spent. This is not the, the third go around. But it's, it's in the contract that, that incidentals and consultation time mm -hmm. and travel, you know. Well, I noticed they didn't bill us for travel. They, they billed us for, although on the chart it looked like they could have. Mm -hmm. They built us for drawings. Yeah. Uh, I don't think, well, they did travel up here for the bid opening, but that might have been Any, included in the first I mean, part. Anyway, I wasn't disturbed by the bill. I just thought, ooh, uh, we should clarify what's going on, mm -hmm. what's, what's coming in the future. Yeah. We had almost the exact same bill amount the, for the first bid, in between mm -hmm. the first and the second, which I guess was for the bid. You know, bid preparation, bid tax preparation. That is uh, about fifteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so we're probably not going to get hit with any big surprise beyond this. No. Now, of course, once we get a good bid and you know we accept it, then they're back on the clock, and we'll probably end up. Uh, I, I'm broke. <laughs> I can't remember what we paid them to date and, and what the estimated amount was, but yeah, I think but they'll have ongoing. They'll have, they'll have inspections. Over. They'll have to be here throughout the whole. Obviously, they'll have to be here through the whole construction and, and coordination and and, and that's and that's somehow meetings. in the longer term projection. Mm -hmm. And that's in the budget. That's already budgeted. Um, so not for tonight's meeting, mm -hmm. because but because I was not involved in the very beginning. And that I'd, I'd like to some, at some somehow, some point, let's do a recap. Uh, so we, you know, what's what's facing us in the next six months? Or, uh, okay. No, no hurry, no urgency. Just, just. I, but I can. I'd be happy. To, you know, I have. I need to bill um, USDA. Basically, we we mm -hmm. haven't had incurred a lot of expenses. Um, you know, and since I last submitted a, a request for reimbursement, but I can show you all that we've spent so far, basically, and stuff yeah. like that. And it's not just me. I think we ought to have a yeah, well, just kind of a. But you can, but you know, but we next? were already spending money before you showed up. So. <laughs> That's all. All right. Anything else for the new firehouse? So, cemetery and I'll go over here. <laughs> Road administrator. Thank you all. Luau. Time off. Yeah. I see. Since I was last year, we had one burial for the nation. And that's we're not very active. I don't have much for cemetery branches to clean up. Lots of great lots of branches. Mm -hmm. And 
we have Cedarville Lawn Service proposal. Yes, this proposal. Ooh. Which is the same as the last three or four years with the addition of a thousand dollars per year. Is that in that three years? Three years, yeah. He, he tends to bump it yeah. every three years by when it's time to yeah. resubmit. Mm -hmm. I think prices go up, I kind of understand. Um, so we started in uh, 2013. Was it 12.5? Is that a little else than 14? No, not 14. Not 12.5. Um, so last renewal was in 15, right? That was a three year to last. Yeah. So that had been 2,500 or something. It must have been a pretty big jump. Of course, the leaf thing added 750. We added that. Yeah, he used to build a separate for that. And then he, that. he added that in on his last bid for the three years. Yeah, I think that's why it was a bigger jump. Mm -hmm. um, that was like 750 bucks or something. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't say I'm terribly thrilled, but I'm when, not sure. When was the last time this also. was uh, advertised? Seeking other, mm -hmm. and I don't think we did. We have anybody? I'm not sure. Really. Yes, we did. Uh, Alexander, when he was in the business, oh yeah, Mark, but he's mm -hmm. ten thousand more than yeah. Was a lot. Was so how long ago was that? Twenty thirteen. Mm -hmm. Early twenty thirteen. Seems like, I mean, not gonna have any more mowing or. Five months. Five months. Maybe. Yeah. So that might April. be a, a time to put the word out, ask if there are others. But, I mean, I have no reason to object to this. Let's see, Bath Township does theirs internally, right? They have a, they're strictly, they have a full time crew. Mm -hmm. And Xenia, you know how? They've, they've they only do. got a couple of them on the fronts to care of the Catholic one. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that how that's connected to the city township. But they had Stevenson and friends mm -hmm. that they, they just do them when they need to mow and, and mow. And any burials they have to do, they do them. But you, they have burials like we do. You know who does see them? Wrong. Or actually. Mm -hmm. Third party. Mm -hmm. They have two. Yeah. North and uh, Massey. Mm -hmm. I, I think they hire someone to help them mow. They do the burials. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many they do. Is the increase from, from 15 to 16? Yes. So that's about a 6% increase, 2% a year if it's for a three year contract. For a three year. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem, I mean, looking at it from that perspective, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem mm -hmm. ridiculous. That's about what inflation has gotten back to. Yeah, things are up a little bit. I'm, I'm just thinking that a lot of. That, that, you know, just on principle, be some kind of open, you know, if anyone else want to get in on this and just see what happens. Is there a reason not to? I don't see any reason not to. You've been pretty good so far. You've done a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. a couple of things. I don't know where we go to try and find that service, though. How, how you would advertise? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I mean, if you just we would put, put a note in the paper saying, uh, you know, do you want to mow the cemetery? <laughs> it's a little more than that, but. I mean, if you put accepting bids, then you'd have to. Give some like this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we can think about it. If you can, if you think of some, you know, the best way to get that word out to the, and, and to basically the, we had three or four months before there's a practical difference, right? Or, or does he need an answer right away? Oh, he doesn't need it. He wants it, you know, sure for the Maybe. probably first of the year or something, but. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that's reasonable. 
I mean, I don't want to be a jerk. I don't want to mess him up. But you can see what's. No, actually, if he wanted to advertise, it should have been a few already. months ago before the contract was up. Mm -hmm. but you want to see what other George, people are charging or where you would come in? No, no, quite apart from that. Just the process of we renew a a contract, we publicize it for uh, possible other bids. Um, and that my, you know, my impression is that people are really busy and they may, it's just, just, just like the experience we've had with the contractors for the fire, building a new firehouse. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, there's no, there's no extra labor, and they just want to just keep going. Well, he does the cattle cemetery too, so it's kind of hard to <laughs> sneak over and see if he's doing that. <laughs> you know, say you got a business card. I, I mean, I've got no I'm bringing objection. It up, I'm bringing it up just on principle. Uh -huh. I have no objection to throwing fifty dollars into an ad in the in the newspaper. I just not sure that it's going to generate much, but you never know. Well, it, I, mean, I don't I think there's too many lawn mowing companies reading the Ellis Springs News. Or, well, I think they would be looking for work. I mean, if you've got business, you're, you're going to want work. Yeah, but you're going to have to be a pretty good side of business to, <coughs> to take on. Yeah, lawn mowing in the back of your pickup won't do it. Right. Or you can say more. Oh, I was going to say, it, it seems that we had a discussion early on that uh, brought us um, an awareness of how hard it was to find someone to do this particular service. Uh, it wasn't like, uh, like we had to beat them off with a stick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never been approached by anyone else who wanted to do the work. Well, we got bids the first round, you know, we had two, right. two or three bids or something. So, what, 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 say again what year that might have been? 2013. Well, I can tell you that the City of Xenia Water Treatment Plant bids out their mowing, they, so they must have a list of people or something. I'm sure there's companies around. Mm -hmm. If you if you want that. I don't know, there's a there's a fine line between trying to figure out if if you say to our current contractor we want to solicit bids, then he's got to go out and look for other work in case he doesn't get the job. And if he gets something he likes better, you've lost it. And you you know, you say, This guy is doing a good job and you know, and it wasn't so easy to find somebody in the first place, then you need to be careful. That's that's what crosses my mind. I mean, if I were in the position of being the person doing the mowing. I, I have no reason to think that we should change. I'm just, on principle, it seems like we really? should well, always be open. Really? Yeah. The other um, concern <coughs> is that um, what if he raises his bid? I mean, after looking around and saying to himself, you know, really, it's going to cost me X number of dollars. And uh, you know, so my concern is that, that he would raise. Again, the yeah. mm -hmm. well, it, I think it was 18000 before we took over here. Sort of the association was paying Part T's 18. 18 right? yeah. So we're still under that and we're getting on their service. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Don, you brought it up. I will leave it up to you if you want to pursue that. Uh, and I will, it. Let, let's put Very it fun. as an item of business. Let's not take action on his contract. Item of business in at the next meeting. Okay. And I will have a proposed course of action. All right. I like that. Anything further for the sanitarian?
Mm -hmm. Or the road associate? <laughs> the road associate. Road, what did I say? Administrator. I'm the road administrator? You're the road administrator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, had our first snowfall. Nice, nice <laughs> fall. Used a little bit of salt, which I'll be hauling some more in here probably. If not, we'll see first a week. More loads in, make sure we got some. Time to use up what we got. Mm -hmm. stuff in. And I'm going to finish up my covert job on the Lamont, hopefully tomorrow. Weather for me. It's supposed to be nicer than today. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we're going to branches for Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, Thursday, no, not Thursday. Not Thursday, we're on Friday. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Well, you're going to have a busy day on Wednesday then. Yeah, do the best I can. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I mean, high road is full of stuff along the edges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. Well, I, mean, I still have time to go trim on and not so bad. Mm -hmm. so no, I mean, it's just stuff on the ground. Oh, yeah. I mean, you push stuff off everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Um, we'll turn our spotlight to the fiscal lots. Yay. Yay. Um, well, guess what? There's a, a resolution about <laughs> permit appropriations. And um, this is resolution 2018-49. And whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township, now therefore the trustees authorize amendments to the following permanent appropriations in the gas tax fund. I increased repairs and maintenance by $1,000. And the EMS billing, I increased their operating supplies by $5,000. You notice our gas tax revenue is up. Yeah, yeah the revenue, uh, revenue status is. Good. Yeah, we're like 6500 over on budget. Wow. That's not so shabby. General fund's pretty, pretty 100%. Yeah. You're the, only one, you're the only one that's less. <laughs> From expenses? No, no, less in revenue. From the county. The road bridge is the only one that's a titch under, it looks like. Uh, everybody else is at 100% or more. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. 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 <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry I interrupted your, um, I didn't interrupt that you were done, but. I was finished, yeah. yeah we're just we're celebrating, I, it's okay. I would move uh, <coughs> approval of resolution 2018-49. Okay, there's a motion. I'll second that. To second any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I don't have anything else related to report. Everything's fine. Oh, oh. It's always scary to say that, isn't it? Thank you very much. <laughs> anything for the fiscal officer from the board? Not bad. Here we go. We'll move to uh, belated zoning inspector. <laughs> well, uh, I can say that, that I didn't have a whole lot to report. But I've been here at the first meeting of the month, <laughs> and I have hardly anything more to report. But I'm anxious to follow up on the status of new appointees to the BZA. Okay. Well, we can Con do that. Concept. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Would you like to um, add anything to that, Don? Uh, uh, there are, I'm aware of two, although I've only spoken with one. Uh, why don't you speak Possible nominee. I, I just speak for the one that you. Well, Barbara Krabeck, yeah. somebody I would nominate to be on the board of zoning appeals. Okay. She's uh, months ago just approached me with general uh, zoning concerns, and she's agreed to be. Uh, considered specifically for Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, some, she's someone who lives on High Road, outside of the village, in, in the uh, township, and has been civically engaged over the years. Okay. Um, is 
You call that a formal motion? Well, I think it's worth, I, I'm aware that you had another name. I, I, well, let's do them individually. Doing one at a time, why don't we? Well, because we can be like one and not like the other, <laughs> so why don't we just do them individually? Okay, so. I move the, the appointment of Barbara Craybeck to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. There's a motion of a second, any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote on that motion? Um, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Is this a, um, so this is a... It's a five-year appointment. It is a five-year appointment. Mm -hmm. It's not a fulfilling, fulfilling the unfulfilled... Well, yes, this is the un unfulfilled term that was uh, vacated by Joe Staggs. Okay, retirement. so, it's, so that, it's not sorry. five years starting from now. No. It's starting from, from the beginning of this year? I don't know if it's Joe's term up at, at the end of last calendar year. Or no. Did he just, I don't, he, he I'd have to look up. I don't have yeah. it in my head. Right. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to put the minutes. <coughs> okay, but anyway, he's, she is Joe's replacement. So, however, that fits into the schedule. So somehow we need to formally record that so that next time this comes up in four years or whatever. Well, we have it on our website. Okay. The terms are, are current yeah. on the website. Okay, but and we've I got mean, the information there. Will somebody give me the information? Sure. They find okay. it? You, can, you can take care of that. Okay, great. Just leave a little XX on the minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll leave a line. Let me sing Joe Stead. Yes, I've got, I've got that, but opening. I just need to know. So as, anyway, as we know, another member of the BZA, or a member of the BZA, recently passed away, Mr. Kimball. Um, and uh, I don't know what the term, which how far he was into his term also, but we certainly can get that information. But I had a discussion with, with, a, with a township resident, um, and, and basically I told him that since he was interested in township government enough to buy the book, uh, by Dylan uh, uh, <laughs> Thomas Lee, Lee? Yeah, no, um, the former news reporter. Yeah, the former news reporter danced the trustees and went so far as to ask to have uh, members of the board sign the book. <laughs> I said that was the fatal error of showing interest. Wait, in did, did you show him what he really what was really signed? <laughs> it's a fatal error of showing interest in township government and and as such would be a perfect uh, appointment to uh, to fulfill a, 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 a BCA. And he said okay. And he said okay. So, okay. And, and, and the name is? I'm going I'm um, to move to nominate uh, Dave Newhart uh, to be a BZA member to, to uh, fill the remaining term of, of uh, Chuck Kimball and into beyond. <laughs> into the next, into the if, if everybody here doesn't reason. know, once you're appointed, you are there until you resign <laughs> or, or the board raises their eyebrows, and, <laughs> but that hasn't you happened get in re recent history. I assume you get reappointed. Yes, you do. It is your turn. So that will make five again? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And if, if we vote on this. And yes. yes, but right, of course, yeah. We, we do need to Go ahead. keep our ears open for a, a another appointment because Kathy Bayless, who's the current chair of the of the board, uh, is only available six months of the year for for work. Although you know, obviously we have so few meetings, but we just can't postpone them until right. this year. It, it would be nice to to have somebody else, either as an alternate for when she's not here, or. She, I, I know she's expressed that she's more than willing. Well, she's willing to, to resign, aside. but she's also a very competent, mm -hmm. hard-working member. So, and we didn't exactly have people in the wings waiting. So, we haven't tried to replace her, but it became painfully obvious when we lost two people that we were in trouble. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so if 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 someone else comes up to appoint an alternate, it would be appropriate. Yeah. Okay. So may we vote on that uh, motion, please? Yeah, wait, wait. Did we need a motion? motion yeah. is to appoint David Newport. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, so that was your view motion, right? Right. Who seconded it? I second. Okay. Yes, it's down with the vote. Wait. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Okay, anything further for the zone? Richard? No, um, there's a zoning commission meeting tomorrow night. Uh -huh. And, but there hasn't been one for some time, so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll catch up then. All right.
Good. Um, and there haven't been any any action in terms of, of permits. Mm -hmm. and, and has the Board of Zoning Appeals meeting been scheduled? The, the time that works for the applicants and the two avail before tonight available members is, is December 13th. So I actually didn't have to advertise it today. I can advertise it next Monday and, and meet my, my deadline. So I will be able to talk to <laughs> these two people and make sure that I've got enough people to have a meeting before I put anything in the newspaper. Oh, and I printed three sets of zoning code from your, from your disc or your stick, which is, which is in there. So you can take that back and incorporate that. You said you were ready to do that. Um, okay. So that's, that's in there. Okay, thank you very much. Standing committee reports. Um, I, I, I can go quickly over mine because both NBRPC and regional planning did not meet last month. Uh, the executive committee, regional planning met, but, but not the full board, and neither of the NBRPCs. Um, I, I noticed, Margaret, that you didn't get a chance to add the NBRPC TAC directors uh, in, into that. So yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Where, where's, this, where's the TAC bill? It would be another standing committee report. It's another Miami, Miami Valley Regional Bank with TAC? Yeah. yeah. So it'll be a third. Okay. And, and we did not meet this one. So there you go. Okay. okay. Yeah, my apology. No, I, I just didn't get a chance nothing. to just do that. I didn't do that. And Mills time. I went through it yesterday. Sorry. <laughs> Mark, anything for the... Yeah. Um, the Economic Sustainability Committee had it at its monthly meeting, and I did attend. Um, we had a list of pluses and negatives um, for the community, and um, there was a discussion of, of those fairly long list. Uh, the economic pluses and minuses? Or? Yeah. Well, not just the... Uh, not just the economic, but... Um, how would you promote Yellow Springs as a community to a prospective employee? And so... Uh, Employer or employee? Employers, mm -hmm. possible. And uh, one of the pluses was um, that we are a very urban community, attitudinal, attitudinally. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was suggested that we advertise on both coasts. That, uh, that cost-wise, uh, we are competitive with either either West Coast or East Coast, and uh, I want to say that was uh, most of the meeting was devoted to to that to analyzing and. Uh, like I said, uh, Emily was kind enough to list Emily Sable, um, listed all of the um, concerns that were generated during the conversation and responded to them. Mm -hmm. The concerns about the senior housing? Um, that was another meeting and... Uh, so what, what, what concerns do you mean? Uh, concerns um, <clears throat> about the economic competitiveness of the mm -hmm. of Yellow Springs in terms of uh, the surrounding community and the East and the West Coast. But the, uh, the meeting on uh, Monday was with the 
last Monday was with the uh, Yellow Springs Board of Zoning Appeals and uh, I was impressed by their forma formality. Uh, the, uh, I, I, I meant to ask you, uh, is, is our zone, zoning board as formal? Well, I haven't been to a village mm -hmm. board of zoning appeals meeting for some time, so mm -hmm. I can't can't compare them. We, I mean, we have all, whether village or township or whatever, been instructed that there are certain formalities mm -hmm. that you need to go through the the, the swearing in, for example, mm -hmm. um, and the witnesses. And, well, not. Anyone that speaks, we don't refer mm -hmm. to people as witnesses. Right. <laughs> yeah, even though it's a quasi-judicial process, mm -hmm. it's always said. But that, um, you know, it isn't just like the, the six of us sitting around the table talking about right. it. There's people presenting their information to the board, and then there's the board asking questions if they have it, and then deliberating well, the, through that process. The proposed senior housing building There were several people opposed to it. Uh, the majority was in favor of it. Uh, the overall height would be like 55 feet, which would make it the tallest structure in town. No. But, no. Uh, the, not the tallest structure in town. No. If there are buildings on Antioch campus, quite yeah. a few that are taller right. than that. Well, in fact, uh, that was brought up, the, uh, the observation, Richard Lupides brought this up, um, that there was a time when you built monumental structures and were proud of them instead of concerned about them in a negative way. As, and uh, he mentioned several buildings at, uh, on campus. I, I felt that um, overall the uh, it was a it was really I learned a lot about about the proposed building that I didn't know before and uh, as a consequence I have not uh, written my letter yet. <laughs> But I will. This was a letter of support. Uh, yeah. Letter to the editor. But uh, I want to show it to you both before. If, if. Hmm. You have a question? No, I I decided it, it's it's not a, it's not germane to the <laughs> the discussion. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Any clipping board business? Uh, I don't know of any. Any well, more word about when we might meet? Well, yeah, there was. Um, it's pretty much the uh, last week. Um, I, the meeting. I tried when I tried to get everybody together. Um, the board president was in the throes of, of harvest. Right. And mm -hmm. um, basically, the same week that um, that Mr. Kimball passed away. Um, Brian let me know that he's finished harvesting. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, our board member, our board member lost her husband recently, so she probably just needs a little bit of time. And this is Thanksgiving before. So maybe in December, we probably should try and throw one in there before the end of the year, I would think. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, it's, it's still in the works, and then hopefully, and so, I mean, like I said, I'll next week, next week until December try, 20. I'm going to try and, um, you know, throw some dealers out there so we can get something together for an hour. Okay. Um, new business, old business. I, I got a short list of things I'm just going to run down. Uh, some is new, some is old. We'll figure it out as we go along. Um, the uh, uh, the postcards, I believe, are out. The DMS ink mailing. Uh, they were supposed to go out end of last week. I haven't heard it officially, but 
perhaps they are. Um, we talked about uh, in our last special meeting that um, our website has been upgraded uh, uh, from the old. I don't know if you've had a chance to to look through it. Um, uh, I've spent a fair amount of time on it, trying to you know make sure it's something that I'm comfortable navigating. If if you know if I've got something to put on there and. Um, it virtually is the same information as our other one, which is good, because that's what I thought was you know, good information to be on there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we can add things as we go along or reduce them as, as we find necessary. Um, I would advocate to uh, replace the old one with the new one you know, as soon as possible. I mean, it's just a matter of flipping the switch. Um, although, I think we should at least explore, and I've put out feelers, explore the possibility of having some design work done uh, to have a, you know, a <coughs> professional feel to it. Because right now it just comes, it just, you click on myvitagic.net, and with the new site, it will just come up with, with text about the township, and then, you know, pages to click on for a cemetery or for the mill or the different pages. Uh, there's no um, there's no graphics, there's no photographs, there's no music, there's no you know, there's no transitions. What's the name of the software that it's based on? Mm -hmm. Word uh, Word page? Word press? Word press sounds familiar. I think that it would be nice to have something more appealing than just text because mm -hmm. people might be looking around for a place to relocate. Or so when I asked about website. photos, you said that it would be easy to put them in, but mm -hmm. we don't have them. Mm -hmm. We haven't put them in. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, is there a uh, an agreement to uh, change over these from the old to the new? I, you know, I like to... Uh, the one thing that, the one category that uh, I think would be good to have, well, like, well actually two categories, um, and that, I'd like a slot for uh, a, a fire rescue annual report. Well, that's actually, and maybe it would fit in there, but I'm not sure it's in the old one. I can't access the old one because of the, the difference okay, in the It could, the, be, a, it could be a link to the other website, mm -hmm. but I think, I think we should have, so, so in the, for instance, there's a levy coming up next year, yeah. so people can see how many. Well, well the, the, the link that's on the original one and the one that's there is the one that goes right to mftr.org. So it's, it's not, it's not, we should pay some attention to what's on mm -hmm. MFTR. Or just that it's easy to navigate that people are getting where they're Yeah, and then I'm pretty sure the yearly report is on that one. Okay. I would ask that the, I want to finish oh, okay. Sorry, no. The other is, I think we should have a finance Exactly know what I mean, but okay. <clears throat> well, uh, uh, now, now maybe, maybe, that, maybe that could be added. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, without I mean stopping what we've already got. Sure. Well, you know, rough up what you're thinking is, as an idea. Well, I haven't talked to Margaret. I should talk to Margaret about what yeah. And we can, you know, we can move along with that. But, you know, in the in, certainly in the future, um, if it's. I just don't want to approve something that. Well, this is not, it not possible no, no, to no. add. No, anything is anything is possible. Yeah, I like what we saw. Almost what what you what's already there. So it's something to start start work. Uh, then just while this is all in process, it would be nice to have a, a comprehensive land use plan under the zoning section as mm -hmm. well as the code. Could you put that easily up? Yeah. Okay. So. Did we move in second? I move. If we oh, are we going to move in second? Yes, we I are. I just put yes with an exclamation point. <laughs>
Yes, I'll, I'll second that, that motion to endorse the new website. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion regarding that? Hearing none, may we vote please? Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Foster? Yes. Did we approve, sign, return the leisure lawn contract from yep. last week? I would agree. It was laying that sack of paper, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So I'll have to dig it out somewhere? Yeah. Do that. Okay. It's in the pile. And the top, you know, it's in the top of the pile. Yes. Right. <laughs> no, how is leisure lawn separate from what we just talked about with the cemetery? They are the dandelion. It's just, it's just, I didn't Oh, I remember. I remember. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, uh, I spoke again this afternoon with, with Steve Ross and Bath Township, and we're hopefully going to get together um, either this end of next week, either formally, we haven't worked this out yet, either formally as a, as a special meeting between Bath Township and Miami Township, uh, or perhaps a working session with, um, with Colin and Denny, uh, and, and knock out some of these, you know, issues that we had about jurisdiction and, and where they would be responsible for, and and then the, the cost of, of providing the service. Um, this is for extending fire service to Bath Township. Yeah. So, oh, sorry, what's his last name? Ross R O S. Okay, thank you. What's the furthest west? Does it include Trayvon Road? Mm, no. It was that's West Eden, wasn't it? That's 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 no, yeah, but no, we're going to Arch Service. We would go that far. Yeah, we would go that far. Mm -hmm. It was West Eden. It was down to Mud Road. Yeah, I think somewhere, so. Somewhere over around Mud Road. Like 235 in this corner of it. We had roughed those out the last time we talked about it. That's that would cover part of the trade line, right? Between, I think there was a little Fairfield Yellow and two thirty five. Yeah, I think there was a little bit of it. Anyway, we'll get that working out. Uh, let me see, I got done. Um, I'm going to a commissioner's meeting. I was uh, invited as a special to receive our check for the for the uh, permissive motor vehicle <laughs> distribution. No, no, no. I'm I'm sorry. No, it, it's the uh, it's the grant money from the commissioners. Our portion of the half a million dollars that that they are that they are funding uh, county subdivisions with nine hundred and eighty nine dollars. No, no, no. Our portion of the half a million. Hmm. Our but portion is going to be. Which is no. No, no. It's um, he told us everybody he, uh, six thousand eight hundred something like that. I was just being facetious. <laughs> <laughs> and, and size. And I love the information that we got. We will be presented with. Novelty checks. <laughs> <laughs> we still have one on the wall in here, and we'll have an opportunity for a photo op, photo op, and to make a statement to the commissioners from the political subdivision receiving the check. Mm -hmm. Holy! When Lord. is this? December <laughs> fourth. I'd love to I make a this statement. A phone call on my home phone about from somebody wanting to know if we were going to show up at a commissioners meeting. Yeah. Did you, does that ring a bell? Some of these this. Does our statement have to relate to? <laughs> <laughs> I have to relate to this. It, it, it does have to relate to the grant. Oh. You okay. guys don't know what else. They don't know another meeting that the commissioners are calling and mm. wanting to know if we're showing up. Not right off. All right, I'll just send that message again. Uh, I also had a meeting last week with uh, uh, the mayor of Clifton and the president of the um, Yellow Springs. Village Council and David, I can't think of David's last name, uh, the consultant, about the Yell Springs uh, Clifton Connector bike path. Oh, and Nick Buddhas from the Glen. And we kind of chatted about different possibilities and map locations and directions and this, that, and the other thing. And long story short, we're going to hope to get a, uh, a hike through the Glen. Mm -hmm. Possible. Uh, along a possible route. Mm -hmm. So that's how do you mean hike? Walk. We're going to walk it. <laughs> to, well, we, to examine. Yeah. The, the potential. Get yeah. a feel for what it's mm -hmm. going to be like. The lay of the land. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that 
six months ago for this section from Clifton back to the uh, Oregon Trail at uh, John Bryan through the mountain bike path and the, and the Oregon Trail path and that was that was an interesting that was an interesting walk. Uh, just this just this morning, I also met with two members of the village council on a potential uh, organization of a community investment corporation, a designated community investment corporation. I think this is something Mark you're probably familiar with because it's been gone through the uh, uh, economic development economic sustainability group um, a, a few times. I know. Uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are with that, Don. Um, I'd like to look at the document. Somebody has been whispering to me about it. Tell them they don't have to whisper, they can talk right out. <laughs> right out. That's the document uh, that came, uh, I don't know, yes. a month or so ago. Uh, could I, is this, could I make a copy of this and take it with me? Certainly, you can, you can, you can take that with you if you like. Take this one? Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Chris, how is this body different from the one that existed when, when we were trying to, to get either, you know, well, let's just say, get the, that it resulted in the property that is now the Antioch Midwest and, and, and all being developed cooperatively between, you know, the township was mm -hmm. happening, anyway, and there's that check on the wall <laughs> that was part of that deal. Well, it was, it was some kind of an improvement corporation, wasn't it? That was, yeah, so that was the, Community in improvement corporation, but I don't know. I just I can't remember that yeah. them either. But I just wondered what what this is proposed to do with that one. Well, that one was site specific to the college. Okay, department. that was site specific. Uh, yeah, they, well, they, they, there were actually three pieces of property I think that were included, yeah, and it um, ended up being a commerce park. In, in in theory, they they were acting in a, in a quasi CIC fashion for the the whole village. But there really wasn't any other areas that were that were. Oh, open. So this is more generic. This this one, yeah, yeah would be much much more wide ranging, including Miami Township and the the ex uh, municipality municipal boundary areas mm -hmm. uh, around. Um, may or may not be Clifton. Um, oh, okay. I, I It'd be a much broader Clifton area. Clifton area. Uh, one part of this which I didn't understand is they're really looking for this group to also administer the village revolving economic revolving loan mm -hmm. fund, which doesn't exist this, at yeah, the moment. Uh, but they're they want but to they, get, they may agree. Well, they did. Then they sell. They got some money back from. Yeah, but they didn't put it in. There. They didn't put it in the loan fund. Oh, okay. Apparently, there's apparently there's thirty thousand available for the economic development uh, or economic. Thirty-five. Thirty-five <laughs> for the revolving loan fund. Five, which is and very nice. so this 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 CIC would be potentially made up of uh, um, of a minimum of forty percent elected officials, sixty percent others. Um, that includes uh, village council, uh, Miami Township, uh, school board, um, may or may not be Clifton mm -hmm. council uh, representative from there, um, member from uh, Antioch College, uh, member from community um, uh, not solutions, uh, um, chamber of commerce, the chamber of commerce. Anyway, that's the 60% foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the foundation. Roughly 11, an 11 member group. Um, and this would be all open public meetings. Um, there would have to be some aspect of, of an executive session because CSEs, you know, are dealing with real with, estate. With real estate transactions. And I don't see how you could have an open, you know, completely open thing if you're, you know, if you're negotiating to buy and or sell some asset. That, I, I, I haven't thought about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I've often wondered, you stop and say, well, why does it have to be not public? Mm -hmm. Because obviously, you know, there's lots of real estate that trades hand that we all know about. Uh, yeah, well, my understanding is that, they, that the sunshine laws don't apply to, 
as I made it, see, I see. Interesting. Sort of like John Kasich's Jobs Ohio. Just a whole other subject. <laughs> so that's uh, that's on the on the horizon. They are going to try and put together a an initial meeting of interested parties um, mid December, which may or may not be all that workable, but it's a thought anyway. So uh, we'll report on that in the future, I'm sure. That's all I had for new business, old business. I, I had a question which goes back to correspondence, which I was not here for. Uh, one of our letters... Which we didn't go over, so that's all right. <laughs> one of our letters referred to an appraisal visit. Uh -huh. What was that? Uh, Otarma, our uh, insurance company, uh, is just starting. This is a new new feature of insurance. They will, they will at, at our request, they're not going to force us to do it, but they will, at our request, come out and do a professional property appraisal of, of all of our property values. Uh, more than fifty-five thousand. It's, it it's already scheduled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's, and it's December thirteenth. That's not. We talked a, about this. Yeah, last week. Did you see the list of all the documents they were hoping we get their hands on for the? <laughs> no. <laughs> right, so I'll show you that. Okay. You show yeah. me that. It might be. I mean, because that would be a current. That would be of current interest. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's specific. I, I mean, I called them and followed up on it yeah, and asked them. Yeah, because we found a piece of paper on my desk. Right? Okay. Is is their appraisal <laughs> just as good as if you went out and hired? I believe an so. So yeah. you'll it's know what this building is right. worth. Yes, sort of. Well, we well, I mean, apparently we got the appraiser says the building is worth. Yeah. We, we've got this on Otama's books for eight hundred and some thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, they're providing that service to you to make sure that their insurance sure. is appropriate. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I'd be, if, if that's really the case, I'd be interested in what, why the difference between three hundred and fifty and eight hundred. Just, just asking. Mm -hmm. uh, the the three fifty is Time the up. is the is the Chris Mutual appraisal. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the reason. The so we'll see what uh, uh, what time is. Professional appraisals are. Now, if we could get 850 for this building, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, that would solve some problems. That'd be a show. Well, this is also a tough building to appraise because you, there aren't any similar buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's be hard to get. <laughs> All right, any other business before the board? It's quiet. Very good. I will take a motion to adjourn. Yes, Ooh, and done. Another done. Mm -hmm. Can you give me Barbara's phone number? Something I can look up.